see how inexhaustible you can become in your truthfulness and your willingness to be of service. Doesn't mean you never say no. Doesn't mean you never take a physical break. Sometimes that's the most truthful thing to do. But it means that you always come from a willingness to consider what's in the highest interest of all and not just come from the reaction of, I'm a little tired. Become inexhaustible in body, mind, and spirit in your service to others when those occasions are called for. And the purer you'll become, the more you'll be called on. But also the more endurance you'll have, the more practice you'll have, the more conviction you have in the fact that you don't need anything, that you're always perfect, that you're always okay, you're always immortal, you can always have bliss. And the more you know this, the more your life can become in service of others. And it seems like a sacrifice to the mind, but it's such a gift because it anchors in the fact that you're not separate. And it anchors in the God and union of love and the bliss will flow through so much more profoundly. It's where the love comes in. It's where bliss becomes bliss slash love. Indescribable love. <coughs> love that doesn't even look like anything, but it's overwhelming to the body. If the body owns that experience, it'll be overwhelmed. But the less you are the body, the more love you can feel without getting overwhelmed. The more bliss you can experience without getting overwhelmed. The more of service you can be without getting exhausted. And there's no greater reward than to not have what you want, but to be as pure as you can be. The purity, the sense of purity has a sensation to it, almost an intuitive sensation. It's like the true you know, Hall of Fame or like the belt with your accolades on it, your achievements. The true achievement is how pure you can be every single moment of every single day. And that's the only reward that is worthwhile. Any other achievement is just ego. But this one, no one will be able to recognize necessarily, not in a visible way, unless they're sensitive. They'll be like, oh, there's something about this kid or there's something about this person or this grandma or whatever your age is. <laughs> but when you know you did the right thing against all odds, that you found the right thing to do against all odds, against all understanding from others, even if it requires all your achievements, your visible achievements to be taken away, if you know you did the right thing, the purity of God, God's heartbeat is yours and there's no greater reward. That is the kingdom of heaven. And no one can touch that reward. No one can touch that achievement, that attainment. It is invincible. It's not dependent. It shines of its own accord. Self-luminous. Purity, bliss, servitude, love, inexhaustibility. Awareness is inexhaustible and therefore so are you. Every time you think you're tired, you can't handle this anymore, you're in lack. You're misidentified. You can always handle more. You can always handle more. You can always handle more. You might have to be channeled differently. You might have to see it differently. But there's always an inexhaustibility at your disposal. When you're the most tired, when you're at the very end of your threshold, the very end of your physical mind, body, spirit experience of self. And there's another calling for service. And somehow it doesn't seem like you can get away from this one. Dig deeper and you'll be reborn as if you just slept 24 hours straight. Right there when you thought you had no energy left. It is the willingness, it's the will, it's the love for all. It's the desire to be as pure as you can be that will enable the inexhaustibility to refuel you constantly. Beware, your job will never end. You'll not have a single moment to yourself. <coughs> and when you don't have a single moment to yourself, you will feel that purity, that perfection, 
that union, that reward. Because now there is no more self. When you have no moments to yourself, how could you keep creating a self that seems continuous, that needs breaks? Don't need anything to yourself. And there is no self. No self, no problem. Only purity flows. Very few will understand this. Cannot be explained. It goes against reason, it goes against the selfish modalities that we're used to everyone doing and being. Continue anyway, because who cares? Literally, who is it that cares? It's not you. It's the assumption of you, which is the opposite of you. And the purer you get, the less of a self you are. The more your actions and your speech and your thinking is not done by you. It's done by the whole, by intelligent infinity. Connected to the collective consciousness of this planet, connected to the people that are in your immediate presence, always aware, it's always aware of what's happening, even when you don't quite understand it with your mind. But there is an intuitive all-knowingness of what's happening, what's needed, what is out of balance, what needs to be balanced, and how your body can manifest to act as that balancing factor. And this is the great balancing factor. And this is the great, for me, this has been one of the most challenging things that has been able to etch away most of my ego, contribute the most to purification, has been to have that knowingness, to have the body be used in that way, and for it to be met with misunderstanding, being understood to be opposite of the actual intention of service and to do it anyway, to be that anyway. That is the greatest surrender, that's the greatest sacrifice that the personality can make. And through that process, repeatedly, 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 coming to a place where one does not care what another thinks of oneself, the expression of it becomes purer, cleaner, less distorted. And the achievement, the attainment, the inner purity of it becomes even more amazing and love-filled and indescribable. The love for yourself will become so total. Your completion is so complete that nothing else competes. No acknowledgement, no recognition on a personal level would ever compete with this. But you can only discover this if you go through the eye of the needle and it hurts at the very edge it's a very narrow eye. Not much can go through. Only the purest of the pure can go through that. And there's many historical figures who display this kind of courage. Against all misunderstanding, they proceeded anyway. Courage, purity, servitude, service. Joan of Arc, for example. <coughs> to want to serve the very people that oppose you and to continue to serve them while they oppose you. 
What could be a better trap for the ego to have to end itself? And in our time, it's maybe not wars, and it's not in our immediate lives, that is. It may not be being burned at the stake for saying something wrong. Although there are places where that still is the case. But in our immediate environment, I'm assuming for most of you, the way that will show up is family and friends. Your crucifixion, your being burned at the stake is that the ones you love the most, or think you love the most, <laughs> will not be able to perceive the true intention. At that point, you have a choice to make. Either you recede back, you regress, and you become understood, and all is well, or you proceed with the service you know is true, and you burn off yourself. You go through the eye of the needle. You crucify yourself. You give up your attachment to being loved, to being understood, even by those you are here to serve. Then, when you pass through that eye of the needle, and you might have to do so several times, you will have immortalized yourself. You are truly not human. There's nothing human about you. You may act human, you may speak human, but inwardly you will always have the awareness <coughs> that there's nothing human left in you. There's only God. So push yourself, exhaust yourself for the right reasons. Never stop. Never stop giving. Never stop sacrificing. Never stop surrendering. Never stop purifying. Never stop being generous in as many ways as you can. <coughs> 